Hi, you guys. So we were uh, invited down to do a box opening. Um, it has gone much differently than, than we thought it would. Uh, we are unboxing a box of Throne of Eldrain for the store, Next Ridge, uh, one of my sponsors and uh, my local game store. So I have half a box left. Fun story. Um, I already cracked half of it and, and Monroe double clicked the record button and uh, that, that means that the original video is about three seconds. It's really good. Um, I'm gonna be taking you guys back through all the uncommons and rares that we cracked and uh, also finishing opening the box. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can do this a bit better. All right, so we have Crystal Slipper, Bartered Cow, Bargin, Moonlit Scavengers, Forever Young, Garen Brig Carver, Signpost Scarecrow, Unexplained Vision, Knight of the Keep, Red Cap Raiders, Skullknocker Ogre, Heraldic Banner, Order of Midnight, and then our rare is Iron Crag Feet. So we haven't actually seen this one before. Uh, it's a sorcery and it comes in at one and three red. Maybe we have seen it once. Add seven mana. You cast only one more spell this turn. Interesting. This is a super strange card. Uh, and then we have our forest and our token. So this is our rare. I'm gonna start the stack right there. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get in this one. I can't stop obsessively checking the record button since I know I don't trust Monroe with it. All right, Ardenville Paladin, Mistered River Turtle, Thrill of Possibility, Festive Funeral, Curious Pear, Crashing Drawbridge, Ginger Brute, Lockthwain Paladin, Witch's Cottage, Marleaf Rider, Lucky Clover, Rally for the Throne, and then uh, our uncommon is Sir Farron the Henge Hammer. And it's two green. It comes in as a two two. Uh, whenever Sir Farron the Henge Hammer attacks, another attacking, another target attacking creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is Sir Farron's power. All right, interesting. Castle Ardenvale. And then we have an island and a human. So our rare in here is the castle. On to the next pack. Hopefully we get some good stuff. And we can just like forget about that. Forget about that very fun thing that happens from Monroe double click the button. He thinks he's gonna completely edit it out and make like make it like he didn't do it. I'm not letting it happen. <laughs> I'm not I refuse. Alright, Ogre Errant, True Love's Kiss, Lost Legion, Wolf's Quarry, Corridor Monitor, Garen Brig Paladin, Dwarven Mine, Weapon Rack, Brimstone Trebuchet, Rally for the Throne, Shine Chaser, Joust, Castle Garen Brig. And then we have, that's our rare, um, so that lets us add way more mana to our pool. Great rare. And then uh, Fierce Witch Stalker Foil. Ooh, this way. There we go. I can do this. Pretty Puppers. <laughs> Alright. And then here we go. Wishful Merfolk. Bloodhaze Wolverine, Fortifying Provisions, Reaper of Night, Return to Nature, Jousting Dummy, Ardenvale Tactician, Knight of the Keep, Unexplained Vision, obviously super great, love card draw, Giant Opportunity. This is crazy. That's just a crazy card to me. Giant Opportunity is amazing. Uh, Sir Eleonora. And then we have Cauldron Familiar. This thing has already brutally beat me up. And then our rare is Stolen by the Fae. This is a sorcery, it costs X and two blue. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X one one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. So super fun rare. And then we have Fortifying Provisions as our, oop, there we go, as our foil. I really like Stolen by the Fae. And then our tokens. I think Cauldron Familiar is 
very good for drafts. I'm excited to play that card. I haven't really seen a lot of him though. I think that's the first one I've opened um, in all the packs I have opened so far. All right, Bloodhaze Wolverine, Fortifying Provisions, Moonlit Scavengers, Merchant of the Veil, Spitten Swordsmaster, Bake into a Pie, Silver Flame Ritual, Steel Gaze Griffin, Signpost Scarecrow, Fireborn Knight, Keeper of Fables, Righteousness, and our rare is Opportunistic Dragon. This is a creature dragon. It costs two and two red. It has flying. When Opportunistic Dragon enters the battlefield, choose target human or artifact and opponent controls. For as long as Opportunistic Dragon remains on the battlefield, gain control of that permanent. It loses all abilities. It can't attack or block. So this is a 4-3, a 4-2 and 2 red, and a flyer. So I, just it being a flyer is great. Uh, and a foil frogify. There we go. Super pretty. And we got a rat and an island. I know you guys really care about those. I'm never letting you live that down, ever. <laughs> Ogre Errant. Fortifying Provisions. Tomb Raider. I can't wait to cosplay this card. Smitten Swordsmaster. Toon Veil Treefolk. Hinge Walker. Reeve Soul. Roving Keep. Corridor Monitor. Flutter Fox. Once and Future. Uh, Sirkara the Bold. This is a legendary creature, a human knight. Trail of Crumbs. And our rare is Once Upon a Time. This is an instant. If this spell is the first you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it's one in a dream. So kind of a funky card because I think you probably hope that you cast something turn one, but also kind of fixes the game back to uh, equal or even if this is the first spell you cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just not. All right, and then we have our planes and a token. Huh? Right. Well, I'm saying you can like put the game back to even if you miss like a turn one land drop or something. Mm -hmm. All right, ogre errant. We see this card way too much already. True love's kiss. Wishful merfolk. Tempting Witch, I really like that card. Wolf's Quarry, Brimstone Trebuchet, Crashing Drawbid, Drawbridge, Tall's Beanstalk, Borrow Witches, Weapons Rack, Drown in the Lock, Into the Story. I like that. Arcanist Owl, and then our rare is Fayboro Elder. This is a creature, Tree Folk Druid, has Vigilance. Fayboro Elder gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. Tap. For each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. It comes in as a zero, zero, and it's one, a green, and a white to cast. So, pretty awesome. Little mana fixing. That's good. All right. And then we got island and a add, basically. <laughs> what? Are you lamenting your failed button pushing? <laughs> If you weren't already, that probably. All right, outflank, opt. You guys know I love this card. Bloodhaze Wolverine, Rose Thorn Acolyte, Lash of Thorns, Lockthwain Paladin, Witch's Cottage, Marleaf Rider, Silver Flame Ritual, Searing Barrage, Animating Fairy, Inquisitive Puppet, and Bell of the Brawl. Super fun card. Uh, Lockmere Serpent. This is probably my favorite card from the whole set so far. Uh, a flash 7-7 seven, seven for 6 is just extremely hard to beat. It comes in for 4, a blue, and a black. Um, you can sack an island and make it unblockable. You can pay a black mana, or I'm sorry, you can sack a swamp and you gain 1 life and draw a card. And you can pay a blue and a black, exile 5 target cards from an opponent's graveyard, return Lock Mirror Serpent to your graveyard, to your hand. Activate this ability only any time you would cast a sorcery. He's so good. And then there we go. I can't believe that I opened two of those last night. It was just nuts. 
in the pre-release kits that we cracked. Here we go. Run away together. Inbirth Paladin. Shining Armor. Tomb Raider. Festive Funeral. Curious Pair. Gingerbread Cabin. Steel Gaze Griffin. Wildwood Tracker. Scorching Dragonfire. Split Cost. Resolute Rider. Mysterious Pathfinder. Arcanist Owl. And then here, oh, I haven't seen this one before. This one's awesome. Wicked Wolf. Uh, so this is two and two green. It's a creature wolf. When Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Sacrifice a food. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Wicked Wolf. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. It's a three, three. This card's See, wicked. Then, <laughs> you can use that on stack to make it big. Mm-hmm. And I will be taking you guys through the rares and uncommons that we opened prior. Uh, Embereth Paladin, Prized Griffin, Wishful Murful, Seven Dwarves, Insatiable Appetite, Forever Young, Fierce Witchstalker, Gingerbread Cabin, Steel Gaze Griffin, Steel Claw Lance, Revenge of Ravens. I really think this card's underrated. Um, it's getting a fair amount of like talk about on Twitter because I think it was rated as like a D by many players, but I've, I've successfully used this card. Like it has let me live way longer than I should. Turn into a pumpkin. Fay of Wishes is our rare, and this is such a pretty card. It is the showcase art. Um, it's a creature, a fairy wizard. Like, can you just get any better than a fairy wizard? No. Uh, granted, Sorcery Adventure, it's three and a blue. You may choose a non-creature card from outside the game and reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, you can recast this from Exile. Uh, it has flying, one and a blue, discard two cards, return Fae of Wishes to its owner's hand. Uh, and Fae of Wishes itself as a creature costs one and a blue as well. Insanely good. And it's a one four flyer. Super, super good. And then, oh my god, we got two rares and one's a foil! What the heck? This is such a good box. This is my favorite artifact. It's a Stone Coil Serpent. It has uh, reach, trample, protection from multicolored. It is an artifact creature snake and it comes in at zero, zero. It says Stone Coil Serpent enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. X is how much you pay for it. This is really good. That is an incredibly good card. And then we have a fairy and a flames. Like Stone Coil Serpent. Is so good. All right. Run away together. Merchant of the Veil. Vale. Youthful Knight. Queen of Ice. Foreboding Fruit. Greenbrig Squire. Jousting Dummy. Out Muscle. Blow Your House Down. Bake Into a Pie. Hypnotic Sprite, super pretty alt art. It's the uh, showcase art. Spectre's Streak, Slaying Fire. And then here we have our Mythic Rare. This is a Brazen Borrower. It costs one and two blue. It's a creature fairy rogue. It has flash and flying. It's a three one. And it says Brazen Borrower can block only creatures with flying. Uh, it has Petty Theft and Instant Adventure that costs one and a blue. Return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. I like this card. Quite a lot. And we have a Born Swamp. I think Brazen Borrower is quite good. I just like that all of the Fae have um, blue hair. <laughs> it's really my <laughs> dream come true. many cards that look at me. Okay. Runaway Together, Emberth Paladin, Shining Armor, Tomb Raider, Forever Young, Rose Thorn Acolyte, Fierce Witch Stalker, Jousting Dummy, Scorching Dragonfire, Wildwood Trekker, Sorcerer's Broom, Mysterious Pathfighter, Sir Conrad the Grim. He's very, very good. Like, very good. Insanely good. 
just stupidly good, really. Uh, legendary creature, human knight. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. You can pay one and a black. Each player puts top card of their graveyard into their graveyard. Of their library into their graveyard. And he's a 5-4. Folio of Fancies. This is our rare. It's an artifact. Players have no maximum hand size. Uh, you can pay XX, tap, each player draws X cards. Uh, you can pay two and a blue and tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. And it is one and a blue. So many awesome mill cards. So really enjoying those. And we got our land. So you put this over here. Sir Conrad is just insane. All right, we're almost to the end of the box, and then I'll take you back through those cards that we opened, thought we were recording, and we're not. How great. Blood Haze Wolverine, Shining Armor, Lash of Thorns, Rose Thorn Halberd, Crashing Drawbridge, Tall as Beanstalk, Borrow Witches, Weapon Rack, Beloved Princess, Ventress Paladin, Wintermoor Commander, Lock Draken, Turn into a pumpkin. Oath Sworn Knight. So this is our rare. Uh, Oath Sworn Knight is one and two black. He's a creature, human knight. He has a a electricity arm. It looks like super rad, very colorful. Uh, Oath Sworn Knight enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. Oath Sworn Knight attacks each combat if able. If damage would be dealt to Oath Sworn Knight while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. And he comes in as a zero zero. Super great card. Um, I played him once and he he just tore up. He's great. Okay. Almost to the end here. True Love's Kiss. We see this card quite a lot. Witching Well, Rose Thorn Halberd, Tempting Witch, Reeve Soul, Roving Keep, Corridor Monitor, Flutter Fox, Crashing Drawbridge, Ginger Brute. We see him a decent amount. Uh, Elite Headhunter, a split cost card, Ferocity of the Wilds, uh, Rampart Smasher. Happily Ever After. So this is our rare. It's an enchantment. When Happily Ever After enters the battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. It's two and a white. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, there are six or more card types among permanents you control, and or cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you win the game. Pretty crazy card. I'm sure it'll see play. Um, super conditional, but it's it's fun to play. Super fun. And then a rat in a swamp. This is our last pack. I'm so sad. I'm gonna cry. All right, here we go. Last pack. Fairy Godmother. Guidemother. Let me get this right. Forever Young. Garenbrig Carver. Charmed Sleep. Lockthwain Gargoyle. Trapped in the Tower. Fling. Scalding Cauldron. Borrow Witches. Clockwork Servant. Sir Farron the Hinge Hammer, Sir Alan the Lion's Claw, and then we have, oh, nice, a rare that we haven't seen yet. Um, oh man, and then we got a, a, a really great foil too. Okay, so Love Struck Beast. It's two and a green. This is a creature, Beast Noble, and it is a rare. It has Heart's Desire, Sorcery Adventure for one green. Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token, then exile this card. You may cast this creature later from exile. Love Struck Beast can't attack unless you control a 1-1 creature. And Lovestruck Beast is a 5-5 that comes in at 2 and green. Very great card. Super, super great. And then look at our foil. It's me. I'm the foil. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a 1-1 flyer. It's a Tomb Raider. It's 2 and a blue creature fairy. It has flying, and you draw a card when it enters the battlefield. Food chicken and an island. All right, so I'm going to take you guys back through our rares and mythics that we opened prior um, when Monroe was really, really good at his job, and he he was so good at his job that he pressed the record button twice. No comment. Um, I think you should get a raise. I think I should too. <laughs> All 
All right, so, um, you know, I wish you could have seen me open this card. I'm, I had like a great face. I was so happy and surprised. But Minero just had to double click the record button. <laughs> All right, uh, this is Cauldron of Eternity. It's a great card. It's a mythic rare. Uh, it costs 10 and two black, which is super expensive, but it's a legendary artifact and uh, this spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So there are plenty of cards uh, like our, our uh, big beefy flyer that comes in at one and a blue. The artifact creature is fabulous. Um, that we can get to this pretty quickly. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, you can pay two in a black, tap, pay two life, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only any time you cast a sorcery. So this is a fabulous, fabulous card. The next one, uh, this is a mythic rare as well. It's called Outlaw's Merriment. It's one, a red, and two white, so kind of difficult to cast. It's an enchantment, and it's a randomized card, which is super weird to me. Um, Monroe was saying when I opened it the first time, I know, it would have been cool if you could have heard of it. He's really like staring at me like daggers. Okay, uh, so I guess you roll a dice and like if it's one or two or three or four or five or six, it depends on what you choose. Uh, it says at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random, create a red and white creature token with those characteristics. A 3-1 human warrior with trample and haste. A 2-1 human cleric with lifelink and haste. A 1-2 human rogue with haste. And when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. Um, so seems like a card that we'll probably see play, but it's super odd to me just because of that randomized factor. Uh, and are you sure about the dice? Is that really how that works? It's the only way I can think of that it would... There's not really any other way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like coins have three sides. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Vantress Gargoyle. This is the card that I was just saying would be uh, pretty fun with Cauldron of Eternity. Uh, Vantress Gargoyle is one and a blue, super cheap to cast, cast and um, it is a rare. It's an artifact creature. Gargoyle has flying. Vantress Gargoyle can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard. So now you can see why he would combo well with Cauldron of Eternity. Um, Vantress Gargoyle can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. Tap. Each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Well, that's more why we'd be good with it. Okay. Castle Vantress, that's a scry two, really great rare land. Uh, this is a rare. Return of the Wild Speaker, it's four and a green, it's an instant, and you can choose a one. You can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, which can be insanely beefy. Like what? So much card draw in this set. Non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So depending on where you're at in the game, this could really unstall you or win you the game. Charming Prince. Uh, this is a rare, and it's one in white. It's a creature, human, noble. When Charming Prince enters the battlefield, choose one. You can scry two. You can gain three life. Or you can exile another target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next instep, and it's a 2-2. Two -two. So I think I'd be most likely to run him as a 2-2 two -two for two and hope to save one of my creatures from an enchantment that got cast on it, right? Like Charmed Sleep or something. Uh, I was really excited to open this card. Uh, this is a Clack Bridge Troll. This is a creature troll, and it is three and two black. It has Trample and Haste. When Clack Bridge Troll enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero white good creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap Clack Bridge. <laughs> Clack Bridge Troll. You gain three life and you draw a card, and he's an eight. eight. What? And this is a really pretty card. It's a foil, like, there we go. I'm directionally challenged right now. Okay, so like, he is a little bit more done up than usual. Like, he's still very terrible looking, but it's like he put on some eyeshadow or something, you know? I wish that BJ were here and he could do like a troll voice and say like, I'm so pretty or something. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is the prettiest card that we opened. This is a stupidly pretty card. It's Fairy Guide Mother. Um, it's one white. It's a creature fairy. It's the showcase art and it's a foil. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it has a Gift of the Fae, which is one in a white sorcery adventure. Target creature gets plus two plus one and gains flying until end of turn. Um, fairy Guide Mother comes in as a one one, costs one white, and it has flying. It's so beautiful. Like how beautiful is this card. Why is it so pretty? I want it. This is, I don't even really like white, like it's my least favorite and I just love this card, it's so pretty. 
Iron Crag Pyromancer, this is a rare. Uh, two and a red. It's a creature human wizard. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Iron Crag Pyromancer deals three damage to any target. So it comes in as a zero four. Another rare that we opened is Sundering Stroke. Uh, this card is a sorcery and comes in at six and a red. Sundering Stroke deals seven damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. If at least seven red mana was spent to cast this spell, instead Sundering Stroke deals seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. So that's pretty crazy. I like the card. Dance of the Mansi. So this is a rare and it costs X, white, and a blue, and it's a sorcery. Return up to X target artifact and or non-aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, those permanents are four four creatures in addition to their other types. This card just seems kind of insane. Um, it's, I think, a bit hard to draft or play sealed around unless you just get a really good pool exactly for it um, and focus in hard if you're drafting it, but I think we'll see it in standard quite a bit. Harmonious Arcan. This is a rare mythic. Crazy good card. It's four and two white and is a creature Arcan. It has flying. Non-Arcan creatures have the base power and toughness three, three. When Harmonious Arcan enters the battlefield, create two one, one white human creature tokens. And uh, Harmonious Arcan comes in as a four, five. I'm sure we will see this in some like beefy white weenies deck. Like it's, it's it makes everything a three, three. That's not an Arcan. It's insane. Oh, true, because it, it doesn't it doesn't do it to your own stuff. It does everything. It's crazy, right? Pawn arcing creatures have base power. <sighs> Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. Uh, this is a rare, and it costs three green mana to cast. He's a legendary creature, giant noble. Um, I'm going to try and get Monroe to cosplay him. Mostly, I just want to get him to glue moss to his arms and face. I think it'd be funny. Uh, Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig, enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on your bow. Then, if that creature's power is greater than your bow's power, put another plus one plus one counter on your bow. He comes in as a zero zero. Make sure you comment down below if you'd like to see Monroe cosplay him. <laughs> Merfolk Secret Keeper. Uh, this is a foil that we pulled, so it's not a rare, but it's just pretty, and I put it in the stack, so we'll look at it. Uh, Torbrun, Thane of Redfell. He is a 1 and 3 red to cast. He's a legendary creature, Dwarf Noble. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. Uh, so I definitely think we'll see him played. He is a 2 of 4. Foreboding Fruit. This is not a rare, but it is a pretty foil, and I put it in the stack. I just put all the good pretty cards over here. Uh, this card's kind of nuts. Uh, it's Wildborn Preserver, and it's a rare. It comes... It comes in for one and a green. It has flash and reach. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X plus one plus one counters on Wildborn Preserver, and it comes in as a 2-2. Two -two. This is just a nutty card. This, it's such a good card. I think it'll see play in like every format. It's crazy. Hushbringer, I don't like this card. It is a rare. Uh, it's one and a white, and it's a creature fairy. It has flying and lifelink. This is the part I don't like about it. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. That's sad. Hushbringer comes in as a 1-2. Midnight Clock. Uh, this is a rare. It costs 2 and a blue to cast. It's an artifact. It has tap, add 1 blue. Or you can pay 2 and a blue, put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. When the 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards. Exile Midnight Clock. So kind of a fun, funky card. I'm sure it's... It, this feels like a jank card. Like, this just feels like a very fun jank so card. It's like six turns, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Murderous Rider. This is a rare. It's one and two black to cast, and is a creature zombie knight. It has Swift End... For one and two black as well, instant adventure. Destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose two life, and then you can recast this card as Murderous Rider the creature. And it has lifelink. When Murderous Rider dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. And it's a 2-3, so quite good. 
Sorceress Spyglass. I was really glad to see this reprinted. Uh, artifacts are rare, and it costs two colorless. All right. Um, and we all, we all, I think we all know what that one does at this point. Doom Foretold. This is an enchantment and a rare, and it costs two, a white, and a black. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card, they lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance, then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like, people are going to be surprised about this card and what it's doing like two weeks from now because they're just not going to read past like the, the second line. Alright. Uh, Improbable Alliance is a super fun card. It's a blue and a red. It's an enchantment. It is an uncommon. It somehow made it into the stack, but we'll look at it anyways because I like it. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1 1 blue fairy creature, to creature token with flying. And then you can pay for a blue and a red and draw a card, then discard a card. So I really like him. Uh, another rare that we drew is Wishclaw Talisman. It is a artifact and comes in for one in a black. Wishclaw Talisman enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. You can pay one, tap, remove a wish counter from which Wishclaw Talisman. Wish witch. Wish, can't say it all. Alright. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman. Activate this ability only during your turn. All right, and this was one of our first mythics. This was our first mythic that we pulled. Uh, the Royal Scions. So this is, is it all the way? It's one, a blue and a red, and it's a legendary planeswalker, Will Rowan. It's plus one is draw a card, then discard a card. It has another plus one that is target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike and trample until end of turn, which is nuts. Uh, it's minus eight is draw four cards. When you do, the Royal Scions deal damage to any target equal to the number of cards in your hand and it comes in at five loyalty counters. Uh, this is just a uh, pretty uncommon. Uh, once in future, it's an instant return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Put up to one other target card from your graveyard on top of your library. Exile, once in future. And it does have an adamant. So if at least three green mana was put to cast a spell, instead return these cards to your hand and exile, once in future. I just like it. Okay. And then we also have another, I put all the foils in this pile. <laughs> Um, Frosty of the Wild, so a little, little buff over here. And then let's see. Okay, so uh, I'm also going to take you guys through some of the uncommons. So we have Grum Gully, the Generous, times two. And I'm just showing you guys like what we pulled in this box so you have an idea like what to expect with variants. Uh, two Wintermore Commanders, and we pulled two Resolute Riders. Two Elite Headhunters, two Thunderous Snappers, two Wonder Mares. We have twos of a lot of things. Two Arcanist Owls, two Savvy Hunters. This feels planned. Two Steel Claw Lances, three Drown in the Lock, a Lock Dragon. Covetous Urge, Rampart Smasher, Okame OK Ranger, Shine Chaser, Fireborn Knight, and a Mara Leaf Pixie. All right. And then we also have a whole, whole fat stack right here. We did crack a whole box. Uh, Falmer, Falmer Knight. We have two Bog Naughties. It's just so fun to say. Bog Naughty. Uh, a Spectre Shriek. Cauldron Gift. We have two Epic Downfalls. Another Spectre Shriek. I was like, I'm pretty sure I pulled two of those. Uh, Revenge of Ravens. Bell of the Brawl. A Cauldron Familiar. I'm a little sad that we don't see this one more commonly. Uh, we only pulled one in the whole box, and I, I haven't really seen it otherwise. Uh, Order of Midnight. Sir Conrad the Grim. Another Order of Midnight. A Beanstalk Giant. Flaxen Intruder. Another Flaxen Intruder. Alt Art. Well, the previous one was alt art, really. Um, Kenrith's Transformation. Okame Adversary. Okame Adversary. Beanstalk Giant. Edgeball Innkeeper. Once in Future. Trail of Breadcrumbs. Keeper of Fables. You know what we didn't see at all? We didn't see a Questing Beast. Zero Questing Beast. Okay. Giant Opportunity. I really like that card. Uh, Sir Farron, the Hinge Hammer. Times two. We pulled two Hypnotic Sprites. 
a mystical dispute, I think that has such pretty art, a fairy vandal, overwhelmed apprentice, we pulled two frogifies, we pulled two animating fairies, we pulled two turned into a pumpkin, we pulled an entered story, Sir Eleonora, Redcap Melee, two Burning Yard Trainers, a Mad Ratter, two Slaying Fires, Claim the Firstborn, Imberth Shieldbreaker, Sir Kara the Bold, a Joust, Skull Knocker Ogre, Ferocity of the Wilds, two Venerable Knights, a Sir Alan Lion's Claw, Shepherd of the Flock, Righteousness, Mysterious Pathlighter times two, another Righteousness, so we're actually two of those, uh, two Rally for the Thrones, Sir Alan Lion's Claw, Tournament Grounds, I actually really like this land, um, I'm interested to see how much it's uh, played and how easily it's played, Shambling Suit, two Sorcerer's Broom, two Inquisitive Puppets, a Spinning Wheel, an Enchanted Carriage, a Witch's Oven, a Heraldic Banner times two, a Glass Casket, I like that card quite a lot, a Lucky Clover, that's very fun. Right, like you get to copy, I really like the Lucky Clover, honestly. Uh, Clockwork Servant times two, all right. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, unboxing. This is uh, the store's cards, so I'll be doing another ASMR opening of booster packs uh, in like, what, two days, a day? On, on the actual, okay, so tomorrow I'll be, I'll be filming it, so I'll have that up as soon as I can as well. Um, but yeah, I super appreciate Next Surge Games inviting us out to open this, do the unboxing, show you guys what we pulled. Um, it's super cool. It's a great way to learn cards, get an idea of what you might pull in a box. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed me opening these. If you did, like and subscribe, you know, the whole thing. Uh, make sure you make fun of Monroe for pressing the record button twice, which does not in fact record it twice. <laughs> And I will see you guys uh, on twitch.tv backslash Elizabeth Eden uh, pretty much every day. All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>